Okay. Hi, Marielle, and hi, Muhammad. Uh, thank you for joining me here on uh, Vonvo.com to discuss the uh, South Yemen occupation and the riots that have been going on over there. Um, just for anyone who will be listening in on this conversation, Marielle, could you tell us a little bit about um, what's been going on uh, in Yemen recently? November, the first day, 45th uh, anniversary, uh, anniversary of the uh, of the liberation of uh, the freedom of uh, South Africa. Uh, now it is a situation that people are still under occupation and they are Okay, great. Situation now where they, they, they have been one million people out in the street celebrating uh, an official day. It should be an official day of celebration. But uh, at the same time, it is also a situation where they still live under occupation. Since 1994, uh, South Yemen. Okay, great. Now, so so Marielle, just just quickly before we keep going, uh, what I was gonna say is, if um if you put your mouse over your screen where your face is, uh, in the bottom right hand corner, there should be a little volume button. Can you just raise that all the way to the top on your on your face? Yeah, if you if you just put your mouse over your screen, there should be a little volume icon in the bottom right hand corner. Yeah. And if you just put your mouse over that icon, just drag the little slider all the way to the top. I have done that. Okay. Okay, good. I hear you better now. I hear you better now. Yeah. Okay, great. Um I can talk much louder. Yeah, yeah, maybe if you could just talk a little bit louder, that'd be great also. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so basically what's been going on is there's been an occupation going on over there in Yemen for, for years now. Um, what exactly is the main reason behind why the South is um, being occupied um, by the North and being treated so badly? Yes. Answer. Yes. Yes. Uh, there was a conflict uh, after. There was a, uh, it began with a peace treaty in 1990 between South and North. This was after or in the period where most of the Soviet was collapsing. And South uh, Yemen has been historically uh, allied with the Soviet and the North uh, with the West. But after the uh, Soviet Union, this process of uh, democratization of, uh, uh, of the Soviet Union, uh, that, in that process, uh, both South Yemen not one of their allies, put it that way. And there was a process of unification of Beginning. Really? In 1994, 1994 uh, this collapsed into a military occupation of the South. Because uh, the terms that the South got in this process, so it should be uh, uh, sharing of power, sharing of rights, you know, different kind of, uh, uh, for example, that. The northern regime, they wanted many of the big 
plants uh, or big uh, uh, properties from the south. The south reacted again, but they didn't want to give all their goods. No, right. they wanted to give, get something back. And I'm afraid that it's not uh, equal uh, to the creation process. They protested. Did did or, the north yeah reacted by just rolling in their tanks and occupied the land. So it was all it was a it was it was it was a battle over resources. Is that correct? Well, you could say that not uh, not just resources, but this is a strategic, very important area in the world. You have the Bay of A. Have transport of oil that goes uh, the, this area. You have uh, also that most of the oil in Yemen is um, placed in the south. So you find most of the oil resources in the south of Yemen. And of course, there is 3 million inhabitants in the south and over 20 or 20 meters of that in the north. Right. And then you have, uh, of course, if the people in South could remain, uh, you have all these resources, it would be a rich country. But the North also wants these oil resources and control over these oil And also the strategic element in this. Right. Because the North, the Northern regime is uh, allied with the West, the NATO country. The South is the the South is the South is allies with the North is no the North is allied with Saudi Arabia with the U.S. and the Western Bloc and then they can do what the hell they want. So so who 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 basically represents the South and uh, you know do they have any allies? Um, Are they just very Unorganized. I've read up on, you know, uh, a bunch of the different tribal leadership um, that goes on over there, and I was kind of curious, you know, how does that all work? Do they really have any representative government? Uh, they don't have. Uh, when it, when it comes to allies, they don't have any allies. That is the main point. To be independent, to have an in a, a liberation process, you need allies. Yeah. You need someone from outside that will recognize you. And that is what the Southern Movement, as they call themselves, wants to want uh, liberation of South. It's a big, very big peaceful movement. They are seeking out uh, around the world to try to find allies. Because they can't get recognition of uh, their own uh, or establish a uh, an independent government, no one recognizes them. So in process of uh, liberation, they also need friends. Yeah. And uh, as far as I can see, they have very few friends in the world at this point. Got it. And they are quite isolated because they are not, not much money. And they don't have these uh, media channels. Uh, that speak the English speaking uh, channels. So it's just Arabs that will that will listen. And of course, the major uh, Arabic channels like Al Arabiya and Al Jazeera, they're controlled by Qatar and uh, Saudi Arabia. So these are brutal regimes. Regimes have control over the media apparatus in the Middle East. And in that sense, it is very difficult to get their message message out in the world. Really? Wow. So can you can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Um, because <clears throat> basically, Marielle, um, <clears throat> the whole idea behind Vonvo is to give <clears throat> uh, individuals a voice to communicate. You know what is going on. Uh, with inside their borders, inside their country, and, you know, we're trying to create, you know, uh, an alternative to the corporate media, such as Al Jazeera, 
uh, where, you know, people are able to actually report what's going on. And so can you just elaborate a little bit more on that point? You're saying Al Jazeera is controlled by who, and therefore they are not giving South Yemen uh, priority? Yeah. I will tell you about what happened during the Libya, Libya war. Yeah. The war. Uh, Al Jazeera, I got a friend, he works uh, in a media channel in, uh, in Norway. Then he worked as an in, uh, as an uh, independent journalist, and he was in Libya two weeks before the war started. Libya, and he told me that Al Jazeera was already in place before the war started, and Al Jazeera is owned by one man, the Emir of Qatar, and the Emir of Qatar. Is, uh, is not is not elected by his people. It's a, it's a it's a dictator. It's an emir. It's not uh, a president or something like that. And he owns he himself owns this channel. And Qatar was one of the six countries who bombed Libya. So they had their own people on the ground who could send. You know, Al Jazeera sent their um, big message about. Uh, about this horrible Gaddafi and all this good uh, uh, uproars uh, that was uh, going on in, in the, the East. Uh, they had uh, their own story of, of the reality. They, uh, they also, it was because Al Jazeera channel that we use, CNN use them, uh, Norwegian media, everywhere they use because they were on the ground. They had these ways to protect themselves, you know, they had their friends and their military apparatus around them to protect them. And also it is interesting what has come up now. I have a friend of mine who's a professor and he has written a book about the Libyan war. And he has written this book that 5,000 Qatari soldiers which were also on the ground leading the operation. I mean, they were special soldiers who were on the ground. No one knew about it, just heard about this bombing kind of um, authority. Yeah, sorry, I got lost there. No, no, that's, that's fine. It was, <coughs> yeah, but uh, what uh, my point is that you have media, Great media, media, media war going on in the world today. It also uh, connected with what happened in Syria. You have one brutal dictator. You know these these kind of um, these kind of pictures you make of uh, of this. first you have Saddam Hussein planted the idea of this chemical uh, not chemical weapons but uh, nuclear weapons that he had, and uh, Tony Blair together with Bush went in and. Yeah, because we had to take this horrible, dangerous man, you know. And this was a kind of nearly a religious mythology in the West, you know, take this big Satan. Saddam Hussein was the big, uh, you know, this horrible man. This one man was the devil himself. The same picture we got of Gaddafi. And you yeah. saw the brutalness of how he was killed. Yeah. And no one reacted. Where well, was the peace movement also in the West? Well, no one testing against this. In Norway, it was four hundred people. Or something. Can you hold? Can you, Mario, hold that thought for one second? Hold that thought for one second. Okay, I want to come right back to that. One second. <clears throat> Rosie, Rosie, I need, I, yeah, I need more. I need more. I'm sorry. Hey, so 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 going back to that exact point. Um, you're basically saying that, you know, companies like Al Jazeera, they have, they're, they're set up beforehand to broadcast what they actually want to broadcast versus broadcasting the entire story within the region. Yes. And in terms of, and in terms of, in, like, just because we'll stick to the topic of Yemen, I guess, what are they, what are they not allowing the South Yemen people, what message are they not allowing South Yemen to get 
you know, out to the world? Is it that people are dying? Is it that there's corruption? Is it that there is, you know, uh, a, a, a corrupt government? They're using, what, what is it exactly that uh, these news stations aren't allowing the South Yemen people to tell their story of? They don't want to uh, get the people to, uh, to tell the world that the UN is condemned. The UN has in two resolutions. The UN has condemned the northern regime. Really? No one talks about it. Really? Because of the occupation. Oh, yes. Resolution 924-931. Two resolutions in 1994. After the brutal overtake of the South. And this historical fact no one mentions anymore. But the people has been angry for all these years. No one listens. And now there is an call it a Arab Spring. You can call it what you want, but in this process also perhaps some as I see it, perhaps also you have got some more enthusiasm into this democratization process because this is also a democratization process to demand that the brutal regime of the north that has occupied your land to give your people basic human rights got it got it so, yeah that's great um and now that that now that makes uh much more sense i think that that kind of brings it full circle you know what i mean Um, okay, so how about we move on to, uh, another, you know, question relating to that. Um, you mentioned something, you know, about, you know, why don't we talk about exactly what else is kind of going on directly inside of South Yemen? Um, and I kind of mentioned it before, is the North, um, you know, abusing, uh, the citizens of the South, you know, physically, are they killing people? Um, are they, what, what exactly are they doing past, like, let's say, you know, not distributing resources correctly? Are they actually causing harm to, to people and stuff? They have had a process of, it has been two things, both occupying their land by taking, uh, yeah, you know, like, uh, beautiful houses that, that belonged or places that people uh, have uh, feelings for and and big land uh, areas that they have taken, just stolen it from the people. And the, you know, the rich people from the north come, up and come in there and live. This is one side. The other side is they have, there has been a missionary process. You know, the northern regime is very religious. They have many of their supporters around the regime, of, around the president party. There is a lot of uh, religious uh, people. And they, there has been a missionary process of extreme Sunni Muslims in the north that has established schools and so on in the south. But this is just to make uh, some of the picture of what is going on. And at the same time, they have allowed Al Qaeda to establish uh, or to, to have bases there. Yes. And on this. Uh, <coughs> This context, they have in, in this pretext, they have they have um, uh, also uh, supported by U.S. They have had drone flights going over the south and bombing Al Qaeda sites. So they use also this Al Qaeda argument to bomb ordinary people in the south. Because so, in but, the first, uh, but in the first place, they got. They, they got them there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, so that that that's um a point that I want to talk about a little bit more than right now. Um, so basically, the North allowed. How long ago did the North allow Al Qaeda to establish themselves inside of South Yemen? How long ago was that? I don't know exactly the, the number of years it has been going on. This has been, go been going on for some years, but these last uh, few years, there has been drone attacks. So, uh, except of Waziristan in Pakistan, uh, is one of the, the area in uh, in the world where 
progress is using um, the drone attacks. So it really, it's really uh, the UN condemns this. And the other place in the world where they use massive drone attacks is in South Yemen against this Al Qaeda sites. Yeah. Um, strongholds, or and so there are also ordinary people living in these areas. So they also, of course, kill civilians. And do you, do you, you do you think that do you think North Yemen honestly has any problem at all with Al Qaeda operating inside of their border? Is there any like benefits that they're getting from having them there that you know of? Yeah, of course. If if you if you see it that way, that if you have the pretext of um, of uh, Al Jazeera, no, no, um, Al Qaeda operating in the south, if they are given their safe haven there. They also have an argument to get the U.S. to back them with military means to uh, suppress the southerners. Ah, okay. Is, um, a way of legitimizing the, the occupation and also drone attacks against ordinary people and, and also all the kind of military apparatus that these no tanks rolling up to the streets and and uh, going towards uh, where people, ordinary people live. No, they're, they're using military efforts. So basically, so so what's not, so what is not, rep say that last section, say that last uh, two words again. They're, they're calling many of the demonstra uh, demonstrators Al-Qaeda terrorists just to legitimize that they can use uh, their hard fists to take take them out uh, by military means. So they use very strong methods. And why can they do that? And why can could they get the uh, support of the US to do it that way? And why does no one test? Because, well, the story of that these are not Al-Qaeda terrorists, the story of that is not coming out in the world. People are believe that it just it, everyone is you know, there's a lot of Al Qaeda terrorists there, and that is the main problem. That is the main thing going on. That's the main protests that are going on. But as you saw, it was one million people out in the streets. So there are a lot of people out there. Uh, and th this is the biggest, I have to tell you, this is the biggest peaceful movement in the world. There's one third of the population out in the streets. One third of the population. Total population. We have never seen this when it came to protests against the Vietnam War, War for example. There has never been such a peaceful movement. And and it's and it's totally the South Yemen people, for the most part, it's totally peaceful demonstrations. Yes, in this at this point it is. But I am afraid that it will turn violent because no one listens and no one helps them. And what will a people do if this goes on and on and on and people are killed out in the streets, kids are killed? I've seen some horrible pictures of this, but uh, no one knows about it. No, no, I've no. Seen some amnesty reports, but amnesty has not used a lot of uh, efforts to try to spread this out to the world. No, but the, the interesting thing that needs to be known is what you're saying, is that what does get reported on Yemen is that it's a huge base for Al-Qaeda, but yet how Al-Qaeda arrived there and why, let's say, drone attacks are going on inside of South Yemen, that's the Norse legitimizing or rationale to, um, you know, to do those sorts of things and, um, and, then, and then civilians lose their lives because of it. Think about the war in Afghanistan. <laughs> Use the pretext of the EU. It was to take the uh, Al Qaeda terrorists. Although Al Qaeda had also had, you know, been in in uh, in uh, both South Arabia, uh, South Arabia and uh, and in Yemen. So they used also this uh, pretext to go into Afghanistan to take the terrorists. Although none of the the, uh, the one who was involved in the uh, flight attacks against uh, the Twin Towers and so on, none of them were from Afghanistan. Yeah. And this 
still a country that now is still under occupation. So they use this uh, Al Qaeda argument. And my uh, my friend, the professor that is written this book, and he's a very renowned professor in Norway, he has written this book. He also says to me that he believes that the US has built up Al Qaeda just to make it uh, this per uh, to push uh, forward these occupations of um, really strategic important uh, areas in the world, like uh, Afghanistan, where the oil resources are, where the, the strategic routes of the oil, um, what is it called, oil lines, pipelines uh, are going to be. And so, so basically, so, so your, your friend is basically, he, it's not that it's the truth, but it's not that it's definitely the facts, but he, he's seeing a, a, a similarity where wherever there happens to be oil, they are rationalizing, you know, killing Al-Qaeda members to, you know, have occupations or, you know, promote military strikes in those lands. Is that what you're saying? Yes, it is a good, it's a good argument yeah. to, to legitimize, to watch your own people, because these are horrible people, you know. Uh, this uh, Bin Laden, you know, these videos, I mean... Uh, where, uh, whoever could have made the, those videos, put it on, uh, have we ever seen him? You know, we never seen him dead. We've never seen his body when he was killed. This is a big, many, many lies. I think that will come up uh, in, into the surface. Surface, perhaps. Well, well, well. The, I think the, the 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 important point to make, and I guess this is where this is where I'll chime in, and then um, you know, we'll I'll leave you with one last question, and then we'll we'll finish up just because I know you need to leave. But I think the one interesting point to make is that, you know, yeah, I do hear where you're saying, where you're coming from with that interesting argument. I think it's safe to say, though, that there obviously are bad people, you know, within the world, you know, uh, that participate within Al Qaeda. So although I, I do hear exactly what you're saying, I think there is a point to be made where it's like maybe this argument needs to be looked at further. Um, I guess just, you know, the only defense I'll make of, you know, my, uh, of, of my country is that there definitely are bad people out there in the world that, you know, do want to do us harm. But, I mean, I definitely see where we're coming from, and this is a very interesting, you know, uh, point that is never really brought in up anywhere. So I appreciate that. Yeah, and I also can make a last comment because I I'm, I mean that all this, you know, why are not the southern, uh, southerners uh, heard? What is, what is the big game in the Middle East now uh, all about? Syria situation, it's all about Iran. It's all about Iran losing the last of its friends. And, and it's also about the last state in, in the Middle East to be secular. Syria is this last state in the Middle East that is secular, that is a secular state. All the others are now religious states. And the southerners has historically also been a secular movement and, and, uh, or a secular state. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Go uh, go ahead. Go ahead. And when it comes to also, because it's a geopolitical situation, it's not about South Yemen, it's about the whole picture, about what the U.S. is doing in this area and what, is the, what are the goals of South, uh, South Arabia in this. Because they have their own, their own interests and their own goals. Yeah. In this picture, they are allied with the northern regime, as I said. But they also have, and they want, they don't want any trouble with the Sunnis. They, they want the north to just smash all that region down. Because they want, to, they want to use all this now in Syria to stay, to destabilize Syria and uh, to get rid of Assad, who is the last friend of the regime. And the U.S. has always wanted to get rid of the Iranian regime. They want to put their own people in, you know, their own. Some, some good friend of the U.S. should lead Iran, because in the Hormuz state that uh, Iran now is controlling, two-thirds, and I say it once more, two-thirds, two-thirds of the, the world's oil going to the Hormuz state. It's controlled through Iran? It's so important to control to have a, good, a friendly regime in Iran. Two, two, two. Iran, are you are you saying Iran controls two thirds of the oil population? 
or no, the population, not population, but resources. Oil like, resources. Excuse me. Sorry. Like, sorry. Oil. Uh, where they? Oil, I meant oil the resources. The production today. Correct. Yeah. yeah. The production today. Two thirds in this area, where and it goes. All this goes through the states. Right. And this is controlled by Iran. And many times they have said, if you if you attack us, if you do anything, or you know, there are a lot of sanctions against Iran, uh, against Iran from the U.S. government and the Western countries. Western countries. And if in this picture, uh, Iran has sometimes said that, okay, if you not lift this sanction, we'll, we'll close down the Hormuz states. And if Iran does that, then the whole capitalistic system is breaking down because it's... Uh, we have to. We have to have oil, and U.S. is controlling much of this. You know, the mil the military industrial complex and all that. It's it needs oil to to go ra go around. Yeah. This is uh, the way to produce weapons, to produce whatever we need here in the world. So to have this power that Iran today has, uh, to it is a big threat to the U.S. And also it is about China because they don't. US really don't want China to get to be a good friend of or to get these new hands of this decision to Afghanistan right. or, and so on. Okay, great. So this area. <coughs> Marielle, so um that that that's a that that's really great insight and obviously uh <clears throat> we can continue the conversation about that for a while. Like that, that goes into other things past just South Yemen. So what I wanted to do here is just bring the conversation back to one last important question that I ask uh, everyone who comes, you know, onto Vonvo, um, and that would be, what would be your message to the world, and for anyone who watches this video um, regarding, you know, the South Yemen occupation and uh, how they should. Um, you know, interpret what's going on in that region. I would say that uh, for the people around the world and for the, um, the democratic countries around the world, it is necessary to support sovereigns in their struggle to get rid of the occupation of the Middle East. Because this is um, this is the uh, what Gwen also has said. They have said that uh, should have the right to self-determination. And uh, I mean that you have to, or the message to uh, my own citizens or to, to people in the US or wherever, is that you have to oppose your own government because your own governments are allied with the northern regime. So it's not a quick fix. It's ordinary people that has to Post this uh, NATO, US, the Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia, Arabian bloc, because they are very strong today, and if they are allied with, you know, with big, with the big capitalists, the big military industry, and so on, and we are just ordinary people. We have, but we are in majority, so we decide what they should do. We have yeah. to show it. All right, great. Um, Marielle, thanks so much um, for sharing your opinion and uh, your knowledge, your insight um, on Vonvo.com. We obviously appreciate it. Um, you know, we will definitely, you know, push this video and get it out to the right people. And um, I look forward to uh, be able to continue to stay in touch and hopefully have you appear on Vonvo again to maybe talk about uh, some of the other interesting topics you just, you know, kind of hinted at here in this discussion. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you so much.